third speaker, Dr. Sanna. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much to the organizers. That's my first time in this conference series, so I'd like to introduce myself. Um, I'm a theorist. I work in Paderborn, in Germany, and I have some experience with the simulation of lithium niobate. Simulation of bulk properties, such as linear and nonlinear optical properties, um, vibrational frequencies and Raman intensities, um, simulation of surfaces and interfaces, and also phase transitions. But recently, I turned to the simulation of defects in lithium niobate, which you see here. Why should one put such an effort in the simulation of lithium niobate? Well, the reason is that there are many, many properties of the material which are exploited for applications. The material is, for example, acousto-optic, sorry, uh, which means that you can use it, for example, for surface acoustic wave devices. The material is also photorefractive, which means you can use it for holographic data storage. And the material is also optically nonlinear, which means you can use it, for example, for frequency doubling. So that the material moves really a huge amount of money, is produced in great quantities, and it is astonishing that you can really enhance the properties of the material by appropriate doping. A very illustrative example is the photorefractivity, because uh, with the photorefractivity by iron doping, you can enhance it, but if you dope, for example, uh, with the magnesium, you can reduce it drastically. So um, many, many, many efforts have been dedicated to the simulation of the point defects. Um, the study of point defects is not new. It is a science on its own. There are books which are dedicated to those uh, uh, investigations. They are not uh, my books, so it is not publicity. We can show them. But there are people in this audience which are investigating uh, defects from 35 years. And the questions you search, you try to answer, are always the same. Do, do we really know defects? Um, how does the doping affect the crystal properties? And most of all, how can we tune doping, for example, by appropriate method of, of uh, introducing the dopant center? Um, how can we uh, then tune the desired properties? Well, in this uh, respect, of course, are theoretical models most welcome because uh, they can avoid um, the preparation of many, many, many samples. So, we started uh, also to make our own models. But why it's so difficult to model uh, defects in lithium niobate? Why it is more difficult than in other materials? Well, most of all, uh, lithium niobate is strongly lithium deficient, which means you have not to model isolated defect, but defect in a matrix of other existing defects, mostly antisites, lithium vacancies, and niobium vacancies. Um, when you introduce a dopant, other defects are automatically introduced by charge compensation. So you have to take them in account. Th those defects will, will interact each other and also with domain walls. So it is an additional difficulty. Uh, many properties are arising only after a special threshold concentration, which means it is not only interesting the main lattice site of the defects, but also uh, some site which is occupied only after a certain concentration. And uh, what's really disturbing for theorists is that uh, um, classical problems of density functional theory, uh, such as the strong electronic co uh, correlation, are uh, extremely severe because you want to dope uh, rare earth uh, metals um, or uh, transition metals in order to achieve uh, determined properties. So that an approach beyond DFT is necessary. I use DFT, but as uh, Professor Evaristov said, uh, DFT is not DFT, which means you have to specify which kind of DFT, uh, DFT you are using. I use uh, um, hybrid functionals, um, HSE06, which is, a, which is a variation of the um, 
of the PBE0, which has been used in previous talks. Um, and, but uh, most of the results I'm going to present today are calculated by DFT plus U, which has been explained by Professor Watson on, on Monday, so I will not uh, spend many, much, many words on that, applying a plus U correction on niobium and iron. Um, I use relative large supercell, which give a defect concentration, which is a realistic one. If you dope by iron, you, have, you can reach concentration about 1% more percent. Um, maybe you know, defects uh, in uh, lithium niobate are mostly um, described in terms of polarons, and the polarons which I'm going to talk about are bound polarons formed when a niobium at a lithium place uh, capture an electron by polarons, an additional electron which is not captured at the same side, but uh, um, on a, an, an irregular niobium site, it is a coupling of a free polaron and a bound polaron, or extrinsic polarons. For example, when iron substitutes for a lithium, it has been purposed that it is also a polaron defect. Okay, um, you have seen this formula many times during this talk, during this uh, um, conference. It allows us to calculate the formation energy of different defects, and we have done it, for example, for the antisites, for the niobium vacancies, for the um, lithium vacancies, and it explains us which defects are formed depending on the position of the electronic chemical potential within the fundamental band gap. Um, I don't, I don't want to comment it too much. Just uh, let's have a look um, at the wave function. This is the difference of the charge of the polar on two different si sides, and you see that it is completely localized around mainly one uh, lattice constant, um, which has been predicted, of course, also previously. This one is uh, the um, bound bipolaron, which is uh, um, mainly the same defect in another charge state, and you see here that putting an additional electron in the picture of the uh, left-hand side, you have that the niobium um, in the upper part of the picture goes down, forming an hybrid uh, orbital, which is uh, um, occupied, of course, by the electron. And this is uh, uh, the coupling of the two uh, defects, which is called um, bipolaron. As far as well, those are not dopants, those are intrinsic defects. I'd like to show you something about dopant, and I pick up one, iron, which is, as I said, particularly important for photorefractive applications. And um, let's see um, how it uh, is included in lithium niobate. In isolated form, uh, we have uh, three, uh, six D electrons and uh, two S, S electrons. And I assume that it is only stable at a lattice side, uh, a light lithium side, in the charge state is plus two and plus three. If you want to know, in principle, what to expect when you calculate the band structure, it is sufficient to use uh, the crystal field theory, which was proposed by um, Hans Pete, just uh, to verify color centers in uh, uh, some semiconductors. And it is quite easy. It tells you that uh, the d orbitals, which are in a spherical field, degenerate. It is only one d orbital out of five. Um, they will be affected by a ligand field, which means uh, the orbital, which are in correspondence of, an, of a, um, a ligand, will experience some Coulomb repulsion, so their energy will be increased. And the interesting case, in our case, is on the right hand side, because it is the trigonal um, uh, distortion, the octahedral field which we have in lithium niobate. This means that we are expecting one A1 level and two degenerate, uh, singly degenerate uh, E levels. When we perform our calculation, that's exactly the situation we found. Well, it is a little bit grainy, but I think we can recognize what we want to recognize. Um, in the case of uh, Iron 3 Plus, we have a 3D5 configuration, a completely filled half shell. Um, this one is the spin up channel, and you see that all occupied levels are, are either within the valence band or just above. And we have the five uh, not occupied levels in the spin down channel introduced by uh, iron. If um, an electron is captured by the system, then we have that one of the um, empty states is now filled, and it is the state which you see on this side. 
But something is here quite strange because we have an energy lowering upon occupation. We don't expect that. We expect that by Coulomb repulsion, the energy will um, have an higher energy. So where does come this energy gain from? Of course, there is only one possibility, and it is the lattice distortion. The lattice distortion that we predict at the iron center is quite large. In comparison with the lithium oxygen um, distance of a pure bulk, we have that upon uh, creation of iron 3 plus, we have a, star, a strong redu reduction of the average distance. Uh, those are the calculations I have done. And that this uh, um, uh, shrinking of the oxygen cage, of course, mirrors the ionic ready of the species. When um, the system captures an electron, the average oxygen iron distance increases by 0 0.1 um, e um, angstrom, which is quite a large value just for a charge transition. And um, it is not an artifact of our theory. It has been measured by EXAFS in the group of Marco Bazzani in Padua. And uh, if uh, you are interested in the details of the EXAFS measurement, which is, by the way, in excellent agreement with our calculation, please have a look at the poster in this afternoon. Um, OK, again, um, um, a plot of the wave function, only of the captured electron. You see here that uh, um, it is still confined at a lattice, uh, basically at a single lattice site, which means we are, doing, uh, we are dealing with a small polaron. And the charge distribution strongly represent, uh, resembles um, orbital, a d orbital, which means that there is not so huge hybridization. Um, OK, uh, but uh, we, um, what do we do uh, to the optical properties when we introduce um, iron? Of course, we modify them. We have some literature results we can use for comparison. Um, a paper which is now relative old, but still contains useful results. And I want to draw your attention to those transitions which have been predicted by um, the measurements. Uh, transition both for the three plus and for the two plus states. Um, and the, also the character of the transition has been determined. Um, oxygen to iron or iron to niobium. Well, uh, we have calculated um, the spectra. What you see here, it is uh, only the imaginary part of the dielectric function, which is strongly correlated to the absorption spectra. And uh, we see here a transition um, with in, 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 the, in the spectra uh, at about 3 eV. Uh, the black line is the uh, pure material, and the, the yellow line is the doped material. And this transition can be attributed to um, the promotion of an electron from the valence band to the empty um, iron states, and it will, in this case, have a character of a transition between the O to P, because the valence band maximum is uh, strongly determined by the oxygen um, atoms and the um, iron states in agreement with the experiment. The same can be said also for the um, transition individuated or, or, or found by the um, iron 2 plus configuration, we have here two peaks, which can be related to the promotion of electrons from the iron states to the, to the, to the conduction band. And as the conduction band has a strong niobium 4D character, it is also in agreement with the measurements. Um, OK, let me close now my um, talk. Um, there is only takeaway me message, uh, apart from everything which is written here. And the takeaway message is that DFT models are able to predict material properties and can be of great help if you want to interpret your experiment. Um, let me just thank all uh, my collaborators, the group of Padua, which has been um, fantastic in providing samples and making measurements, uh, the group of Osnabrück, which induced my calculation, which suggested them, and uh, uh, also all people in Paderborn which have participated to this talk. And with that, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Questions, comments, Mario? Miguel, Miguel sorry. It works? Yes, okay. Um, I have a comment. First of all, you have pointed out that for understanding what happens when you have an impurity in an insulating lattice uh, like this one, it's quite convenient to use the crystal field model. So, in my opinion, crystal field model is only good for qualitative purposes because. Absolutely, 
Okay. I, I, I just wanted to see, okay, you, you get the bank structure, you see le levels, what are those levels? So you get the before of that, an idea of what you're expecting to calculate, but of course, absolutely only qualitatively. Okay, so a second question concerning the meaning of polarons, mm -hmm. because um, in my opinion, when uh, people deal with polarons, normally polarons are mobile, eh? mm -hmm. with temperature. Are you sure that in all cases, all your defects you are, you are mentioning are mobile or are fixed? Because uh, in such oh, a case, oh. the meaning from my static calculation, I don't get information about the mobility of polarons, of course. One could calculate, but that, that was not the case. Um, so, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Okay, oh, one more question. Last one. Thanks. Uh, I have uh, one comment, perhaps, uh, and uh, yeah, two very short comments. The first uh, is that uh, one thing that you perhaps could think about calculating and which in my opinion is not well studied in literature is the case of B antisites. So on one hand you could see if it is energetically favorable to have two um, niobium antisites. Which kind of antisites? Uh, niobium lithium and niobium lithium one uh, close to the other. Okay, which are not so close because they are uh, lattice distance uh, exactly. far apart. Exactly. Okay. Well, the, okay. the first possible, yeah. Okay. Because in principle, this could be another center that could host. Yep. In my opinion, this is not known. And a second very fast comment is that uh, you have shown the absorption spectra of iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus. Perhaps uh, it's good to know that uh, we measured at, at 342 nanometers, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong, the cross section for iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus should be equal. So this is something that we should check. Um, when we are increasing uh, um, the effects of this of one kind with respect to the effect of other yeah, kind. Yeah, practically you see that the absorption of one increases, the other mm. center increases, but there is a one point that doesn't Which are, change okay. because the cross section equals. Okay. Yeah, so we should check this. Of course. Thanks. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Okay.